We don't know. I should have had cookies before. Should have had cookies before. Hello, everyone. I don't need to yell, do I? I've got a microphone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cars and Bids Live. Cars and Bids Live. With featuring me, Doug DeMuro. We have Kenan. Hello. We also have my legs, which are just way too big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get pants next time. This is so embarrassing. And also, today, we have a special guest. Is, he's really special because we've never done one of these before, so he's the only guest. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Except for Kenan, who we, is already a guest. Anyway, it's Matt Farah from the Smoking Tire. Matt Farah. Matt Farah. Oh, there he is. Fade goes. in. He just appeared. That was so elegant. Did I fade, did I fade in? You did. That's That's what's up. You're here now. It's, you're almost Hello, in boys. Chair, too. It's perfect. Matt, how are the you doing today? The placement of me on the empty chair is really, that's, that's excellent. Next time, just put a bot, like a mannequin's body in that <laughs> chair, and we can match it up real nice. Well, you know, I did that. I, um... I set up all the uh, uh, electronics for this. Um, yeah. No, I'm kidding. I have no idea how to work anything here, and there's a lot of wires. So, Matt, how are you doing today? I mean, I don't have a mid-century bunker, so <laughs> not as good as you. What is this? <laughs> Where are we? Today we're in the Cars and Bids office slash studio. What do you think of this, Matt? We got I think, it, I think it looks great. It looks beautiful. I like your chair selection. I like your interlocking the uh, table thing that you've got going on there and uh the color of those chairs really accentuates your legs um it's <laughs> look at these ridiculous <laughs> legs oh my you're all you legs. just use the word summer as a verb why aren't you more tan <laughs> you know why I, i've become kind of a sunscreen enthusiast i don't know what we're supposed to talk about here but we're going to talk about just life i've become kind of a sunscreen enthusiast over the years because you know you burn and then it's all you're all hot and you know i don't like that so i put on a lot of sunscreen. somebody's somebody was messing with my menus there i just became i became a hint of windows can, I, can I ask you whatever. matt there was the person messing with your menus was that you were you no. messing with your menus <laughs> no no, you can you could see my hands. My hands are nowhere near. Oh, but uh, congratulations to my, the newest member of the Kuntosh uh, Union. Thank you very uh, much. The, the white car is looking very nice. I, you know, I, I know that you had a red one. You know, I called you. Have in, have a red one. Well, you know, yeah. it's it's been at uh, it's been in the shop for six months. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so every Kuntosh owner had their car yeah. at some point, and then yeah, yeah. Most yeah. You never me. truly own one. You just keep looking at after it for the next mechanic right? that's exactly it so so i called matt uh can we can, can you get the shot of me in the countash is that a thing i called matt uh in june do you remember this call oh there it is yes i do yeah and you asked me about what to look for or what not to look for and do you some have, things do you have the original decals on the wheels like i do you see these right yeah now? i well, do well yeah. my decals are so original that we put them on three weeks ago so, <laughs> I called you and I said, Matt, I said, what do I, here's the deal. I called you. I don't know if I told you this, but I called you and I had already made a deal on a Countach. And I said, hey, I'm thinking about buying it. And you said, you need to look for the following 14 things. And as I recall, I was driving through Virginia and you basically told me all these things that I you need to look for. Of course, I had made a deal already on a car and I had looked for none of them. And I <laughs> <laughs> So I had that car PPI and it didn't work out. So uh, various other cars came and went. Eleven along. of the fourteen things were were a no go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So that didn't work out. So then, um, then I got a different one, and here it is. And it probably has the same problems as the car original car, but at least now I know about them beforehand, as opposed to after sure. the fact. Yeah, so, yeah, and it's beautiful. White, white with white wheels and a and a dark interior is what's up. You don't want that white leather. That's no good. Why? But because it wears. This is good. It cracks. Yeah, it looks it looks hideous. It, it just it, it looks great for a month when it's new and then it turns to, to dust. There's also something about the fact Countach interiors, for some reason, nobody's really good at like recovering. It, like when, when you see one that's been redone, you can clearly tell for some reason. I don't really understand. Yeah. Why. Um, it was interesting because uh, Harry just had all that stuff done to his. It was because yeah. he had a little bit of leather restoration done. And it was interesting hearing the guy like talk about like it's supposed to have a certain level of shine and all that stuff and how difficult yeah. it is to match. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's mine is original, thankfully. Um, and I really am annoying about keeping it that way <laughs> because I don't I don't want that to, to happen. Yeah. And um, 
yeah so anyway but congratulations it, it's beautiful Thank and you, you're Andrew. the right person to have one because you'll actually drive it and they work much better when they are regularly driven it's already become clear to me so mine is carbureted you know there's a starting procedure let me tell you something when you when you drive a car right you get it and you start it okay now i assumed that the countach would be like that and so i was no like, no here's what you do <laughs> not yours yeah not the carbon so here's what you do just so everybody knows there's a kill switch battery kill switch in the trunk so you start by opening the trunk and uh, turning the car on you know the battery okay good that's done so then you get in the car and um well first you walk around it a couple times because you're nervous then you get in the car at least what i did this morning you get in the car you turn it to the position one and the fuel pump you hear ticking okay so it ticks for like yeah. they say th wait 30 seconds of that okay really by oh the way God. at cars and coffee now there's 400 people so the doors have gone up <laughs> and everybody's coming up to me like oh my god doug can i get a picture and i'm sitting there like tick 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 okay yeah yeah okay so then after 30 <laughs> seconds you press your foot to the floor of the accelerator a few times mm -hmm. and then you turn the key, and of course it doesn't start, but then after the third time it does. And that is <laughs> that is the minute-long Countach starting procedure. <laughs> yeah. So mine is injected, so mine is not like that, right? Mine, you turn the key to the fuel pump position, it ticks for about five seconds, and then you just hit the starter, and it fires instantly, and that's all you do. That you don't have to do nice. anything. Else. And I wish that mine was like that, but I wanted a carbureted car. I think that carbureted is like part of the story of the Countach, and also you don't get the constant pervasive fuel smell while you drive the car <laughs> that I get. And so I, you know, no. <laughs> the real benefit. It's very charming. Yeah, it's part of the vibe. Yeah, yeah. It's part of the vibe. It's so cool. The vapors really. eat through the leather. That's what happens. <laughs> it's such an experience, though. Like when when you got it, and I just like drove down the street, and it was sitting there in front of your house. I'm like. Oh my God! It's a good touch. Yeah. Kenan is actually the reason I bought this car. Can I tell Kenan? Do you want yeah. to tell the story? Wait, so one day we were going out to dinner, and like before we picked it up, we ran to the grocery store to get more cookies because we really like cookies. And uh, and we we're in my my three fifty five, and he was just like he would not stop talking. He was like, "This is so cool! It's so buzzy and low and exotic." And he was just like, "I'm so happy! I'm gonna buy a vintage like Italian car because it has all this cool stuff that goes with it." And, and it is. And the Countach is, you know, that too, it, as far as an extreme, I think, as you can get. Kenan, meanwhile, sells his 355, makes a ton of money on it, and I spent $575,000. Kenan, it was the most expensive ride I've ever had in my entire life, and Kenan comes out of it. <laughs> He's all good. <laughs> I'm, happy. I'm, I'm very good. I'm very happy. It's I'll good. tell you what, um, the, Doug, when you, the first, like, week or two with that car, you'll be nervous every time you drive it. And then it, you won't be. Like I, I had my first like month with my car, my first four or five drives, I was terrified of just everything. <laughs> and then it actually became okay. And I stopped being so scared of it. And it, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome when you get to that point. Were you tired? Were you scared more of breakdowns or of like something happening to it? Like something it, happening, something happening. Something yeah. I'm, I'm not, I was not really, yeah, yeah. Just little. And, and, and so now I'm not, and it's the, just the greatest thing, you know, ever. So I it's think still it really point is. A to point A, but it rules. It rules. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's, it's not a car you can yeah. take anywhere. I, I, I was, I'm surprised at how truly compromised it is trying to drive it somewhere. But like the experience I was telling you right before this started, like people are like, Oh, but but it's such a crappy car to drive. Everybody knows it's such a bad car to drive. Well, it is and it isn't. I mean, it is in the sense that like visibility is bad and the clutch is heavy and like it's a difficult car, but it isn't in the sense that it gives me this incredible thrill that I think people don't realize just how much you don't get that in the boring modern supercars of today. Um, a McLaren True. Senna, in my mind, doesn't give you much thrill. Mm -hmm. All you need to buy a 918 is rich, is wealth. That's it. There requires yeah. no dedication. There requires no effort. It's not like something. That's not like, it's just like a prize for rich people. Whereas this is like, if you're a real crazy nut job car enthusiast, degenerate. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is yeah, the kind of thing you could do. Yeah, it's the hair. It's the heroin. It's the you're at the heroin level of car of car ownership with the Countach, and and I think when people say it's bad to drive, I think in certain situations it is. It's not great in traffic. I can't hear anything. But it's um. Can you hear me? No. Yep. Am I gone? Uh, okay. Can. Um, can maybe can translate. But in like in uh, sweeping you know canyons like like the know, mountains by by where you have or on the highway as a touring car it's yep. actually quite fantastic um 
Yeah, I, I really like mine. I drove mine to the Audi R8 press launch in Santa Barbara and really on, one-upped sorry, everybody. Matt, we can't hear you. Sorry, we have some sort oh, of audio no. issue here. I'm going to keep making farting noise until you can hear me again. There, can you hear us now, Matt? We, yes, we, I can. We're back. I heard we're you back. the whole time. You heard me the whole yeah. time. Okay, all right. Um, I don't know if anyone else did, but it's uh, yeah, it's in in traffic the Countach sucks, but on open sweepers right. or on the highway, it's actually quite quite good and and very nice. The steering is very light. Yeah. It's it's really nice. Well, yeah. and the sound of the car is just so. I mean, it just it's such yeah. an amazing feel. Yes, it is not a car to drive in traffic, and I think that like or in like even like stop and go like in a neighborhood where there's a lot of stop signs, even if no one's on the road, yeah. like, you don't want to be just moving slowly, and that's not what it's for. But like, man, is it fun to just like. Step when you're in it motion, kill. it's fantastic. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, I love it more than Kenan. Well, I'm congratulations. You uh you have earned it. It is a good it is a good car. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's it's it'll be fun. Or maybe not. I don't know. But so <laughs> no, far, it will. It will be fun. It'll it'll be fun right up until the first couple of services. No, I think it'll be I'll send I'll send you some in I'm gonna email you some of my invoices later. <laughs> you can have a laugh. <laughs> I have an invoice from this car of for like a hundred thousand dollars in two thousand five. Can you believe that? <laughs> That's probably yeah. about what that car was worth in 2005. It has to be. It has to be about yeah. what it was worth. I bet. I mean, I, I bet. It's, yeah. a, it's yeah. quite a decision to do all that work when yeah. you don't really know what the future holds for the car and when the past hasn't actually been all that kind to it, frankly. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have an invoice from 2018, right before I bought my car for the, the valve job. And it was seventy five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the one that I had so anyway. expected that needed a rebuild. Uh, Evans quoted me one fifty. Mm. Yeah, that's tough. With with it's a rebuild crazy. and a lot of other dumb stuff. But now the cars are worth so it's much crazy. it justifies the maintenance costs a lot. It's just so much more. Uh, and it'll, yeah, you're, it'll be great. It'll be wonderful. Oh, it'll be. You're great. gonna drive it. You, you will drive it and enjoy it, and it'll be great. But it it genuinely it it proves your and my theory that we've said a zillion times that the miles are cheap. Yep. You know, you've got to do the maintenance either way, whether yep. you drive it or not. And if you're factoring it all in, the more miles you do, the cheaper each mile becomes. Yeah, that's right. And it's one of the so, reasons I wanted a car that's been driven. Every mile, yeah. I don't even, I honestly do not know the odometer reading. I don't care. It's it's so funny that people freak out about that kind of stuff so much on some cars. And yeah. when, when it gets old. Well, it's in kilometers and those aren't real anyway. So kilometers whatever. aren't real. Let me tell you something. When people <laughs> yeah. when people buy 275 GTB short noses, they're not like, how yeah. many miles are on it? <laughs> yeah. Nobody cares. Totally. Plus, that's all, totally. that's all been rolled reset. back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right, so we're uh, we're talking. What are about, we doing over here? We're talking about cars. We jump into some auctions. All right, we got some auctions. We got some auctions going. All right, this S two thousand is about to close. Um, Ooh, but this AP this AP one. Um, nice AP one S two thousand silver over red, which looks amazing. Oh, Matt, tell us tell left. us your S two thousand thoughts, please. Go ahead. Uh, I think these are objectively better cars than the Miatas they were selling at the time, but they are worse for tall drivers because that dumb non-adjustable steering wheel gets in the way of my knees every time. Yeah. It drives me insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. Uh, they are a little But they're tight. definitely collectible. They're cool. You know, the market on these is kind of flattened. Remember when it was going crazy the last couple of years? It was nuts. It, it was, was nuts, and I was like, "Up, oh, that's it. These are these are gone forever." But it's kind of mellowed out a little bit. I right? think people realize that there are actually an enormous number of thirty thousand mile clean. Not to say that's not a good thing. I mean, it's still the case that you yeah. can buy one and drive it and not really um, lose anything. But yeah, um, it, if you're if you're the right size, though, I don't know what the, what is the bidding at on this one right now. Twenty so something. Uh, what do you say? Two? Yeah, twenty four 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 four. If you fit in this car, I mean, what a great weekend car for twenty-five grand, right? 100, 100 I mean, it's a horsepower. Uh, it's just it 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 it'll, it's reliable. It's very well made. It it's a classic style. It's fun to drive. The inputs are excellent. Yeah. Um. There's an, a great enthusiast community. There's plenty of modifications if that's what you want, and you're getting into a great analog car that'll never be worth less than it's worth today um i agree um 
You know what's funny about these S2000 auctions? They don't really get an enormous amount of comments or questions because they're all relatively similar. Like they're all, except for color. And like if you upload yeah, service yeah. records, it's like, well, here's, uh, this is what happened. <laughs> this is the car. Here's a Honda. Honda. <laughs> yeah, here's a Honda. Like, yeah. There's not much to say yeah. about it. Like it's a clean Carfax, you know, nice car, fun to drive. Matt, did you go on the press launch for the S2000? No, this, I was, uh, I was a sophomore in college for, the, for that so this is i'm not that old what was your first press launch oh man my first launch was awesome it was the gt 500 kr 2007 oh, wow. remember that oh yeah the no kr God, i haven't seen one of those and, in, uh, in uh, forever since then yeah. <laughs> what happened Dude, to every it? single one of those has 150 miles and the plastic still <laughs> on them in, in a garage somewhere <laughs> you know they're never seen or heard from again remember the big thing was at a carbon fiber hood carbon and fiber it was hood. $25,000 to replace <laughs> if you ever got into a crash and it, and it wasn't that the one with the giant silver wheels like they were just massive yes. oh yeah there yeah. it is oh, yeah that was the ultimate mustang of that gen so that was your first press launch yeah, I had a couple of press car loans before that, but that was my first launch, and it was um, a guy named Alan Hall at Ford really saw the value in what we were doing with our early YouTube this stuff. Was YouTube. Said, this we was for get YouTube. These. It wasn't for an outlet. It was a YouTube launch. No, it was a YouTube launch. Wow, yeah, no yeah. way. Damn. Yeah. yeah, it was in Utah, the mountains of Utah, and I really felt like the the king of the world. Track time at Miller Motorsports Park. Wow, and, Miller, wow. Miller and was, the GT500KR. You were the king of the road, in fact. Yeah, and I had driven the regular GT500 before that, and that thing was horrible. The 07 GT500 <laughs> is such a piece of junk. And the KR actually did uh, did really improve uh, some things about it. Uh, and so was, coming up cool. next on the auctions, we got a 07 GT500. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're not they're not good. Um, there were some tough Shelby but, Mustangs in that era. Um, God, I'll never forget the Cobras that they lied about the horse. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the ninety nine Cobras, and they had to recall them and give them more power. <laughs> yeah, look, it was a tough look. They, you know, they were trying to they were trying to make something happen. You know, and it, uh, yeah. it, it, it something happened. All right. GM um, put the LS one in the Camaro, and Ford was like, "Just say it has more. Just say, <laughs> <laughs> just say ours has more." <laughs> oh man! Meanwhile, the S two thousand always had two hundred and forty oh, horsepower. Yeah, this S two thousand is yeah, going. going. You know what I've you know what I've noticed about certain cars? These auctions, Matt. Certain cars, the bidding hangs way back until the last day. Porsches, mm. S two thousands, because people who buy those cars are familiar with how these auction sites work, and so they know yeah. don't put your bids in until the last yeah. minute. And so we get emails from from the sellers, and they're like, "What's well, the overwhelming majority? It's not just those cars. It's like people. It really comes at the last five minutes. It, it, it does. Really it does. But I, but Porsches and S two cars where these are primarily transacted on the auction sites, especially after uh -huh. those people hang back." And we get emails from the seller sometimes like, my car's, at, it's like a $35,000 car. My car's at 13 grand on the last day. Yeah, they're you, freaking it, out. It sells yeah. for four to six. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, you know, we, we've listed at, at my place, West Side Collector Car Storage, we listed some cars with you and we've listed some cars on, on other auction sites for our clients. And, you know, I always encourage a no reserve. You know, I, you know, I love a no reserve because it's, it's a commitment to sell and yeah. gets the action going. But the all of our clients, man, that last first half of that last day, they're all just yep. calling us, just <laughs> sweating, sweating. And I'm going, look, we're getting every eyeball on this thing. You will, you will get market price, and no one's ever, uh, Kenan, no one's ever been disappointed. Kenan did no yeah. reserve for the three five five, which, absolutely. by the way, is balls. I did it with like my Defender, but like, okay, he was yeah. so nervous for me. He was like, "Are you really sure you want to do this?" I'm like, "Yes, I believe what I preach." And I'm like, and yeah, and it, and it crushed it. Yeah, I was thrilled with it. No well, reserve is the way to go. We we did it with people, that. Uh, you know, it's especially true. I mean, this S two thousand is not no reserve, but it would be a great no reserve car because like definitely. the market is so defined on these. I would not go no reserve if I had something insane like a 1983 circus wagon a hub mobile I don't know oh, whatever like something wagon, you don't yeah, know what the va the value is sure but, but something with a known a known value Cayman's range Boxsters, yeah. S2000s I've never understood why people put a reserve on them you know where it's going to sell I could tell you right yeah. now based on 20 comps where this car is I mean I don't know you know but you could like if you researched exactly what this car will sell for <laughs> reserve yeah, or no it's reserve. Yeah. Reserve is off, right? It's Met Reserve at this point, right? Uh, I, we, you know, we don't disclose this. Uh, this sort oh, of really? thing. You know what we found, Matt? It's a good question, and it's a good thing to discuss because people yeah. ask us about this. Mm -hmm. We've discovered that if you announce that Reserve is off, 
people stop bidding. Yeah, it's not like mm. Meekum where people start to get excited, like, oh, the reserve is off. Like, it's, it's not that sort of even thing. Even th in those auctions, though, I think they shouldn't do it. But anyway, yeah. continue. No, but yeah, that's the whole point. It's like, even once we tell sellers all the time, once it passes that, just keep it a secret, keep it to yourself. Like, celebrate on your end, but like, just don't tell anybody about the reserve. The reason I think that's true is we've noticed that when sellers disclose the reserves off, and we tell sellers they're allowed to, they, and some of them still do, but when, when, when sellers are, do, do that, it makes people suddenly go from, oh, we're bidding, I might win this, to I'm am over I overpaying? Yeah. Am I overpaying for this yeah. thing? Like, this is what the seller thinks it's worth, and so now I'm paying more than what he thinks it's worth, and so... I, and it, we've seen it really kill build, bidding more than we've seen it like help bidding. Definitely. Hmm. Okay, well that's fair. So we don't know. We don't know if it's actually going to sell or Unless not. Unless the seller point. has already announced it in one capacity <clears throat> or another. But it's an uh, interesting. We have thing. none. Uh, well, not much left to talk about with the uh, the S two thousand. It's no, uh, we'll silver and it's red and it's. And red uh, and it's but it's and the bidding continues. Oh, we got an M4 uh, ending too. Oh my to god, next. everything's so okay, Matt. M4 convertible here, 16 M4 convertible. So, oh, six speed manual. Interesting car. Uh, yeah, I got some modifications. I have to say the paint looks unbelievably nice in the pictures, which is so hard for well for photographed. Yeah, oh, nice. it's on TEs. <laughs> TEs do look good on everything. TEs Although look good T on TEs look good on everything, except you can't really trust an owner who puts TEs <laughs> on anything. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's like, they like, nothing says this has an eBay turbo. Like, <laughs> it's a yeah. I kind of feel that way about a lot of mods, to be honest. We still get people almost every day who insist that their car is worth more because of the mods. Matt, can you please? Yeah. Please. It. There is a very, very small number of mods for which that is actually true. Yep. Um, About the, uh, six. The, uh, and five of them are in the off-road community, by the way. Like, right. We, we and one, one of them with... is a full singer conversion. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's right. We do get more for like forerunners that are well built because I think a lot of people are buying them to do that. And frankly, a lot yeah. of those parts, you know what you're what you want to do. And if someone's already done it, it's like all right, well, right. it's on there, steel right. bumpers. But right. man, other stuff, and it's just so hard to disavow people of this notion, no matter how hard we try. And boy, have we tried. <laughs> They're like, oh, I, I got yeah. ten grand in mods, so I take my car. I add ten grand. <laughs> it's like, oh. yeah, it's an, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, best case scenario, you know, if the car is tastefully modded, you'd get what it would otherwise get stock, right? That's your, that's pretty much your best case best scenario. Case. And I think some of these mods, at least in my mind, especially as a guy who doesn't really mod cars, I think some of these mods are the opposite. I mean, I would pay less because I know I have to undo it. Right, it, knowing, especially if, like, yeah, it's, it's tough with things like wheels and stuff or, or whatever where you, you want the stock look. And, and again, right. it's somebody else's personal preference. Like, you know, the owner liked the way it looked, but that does not mean you will. Um, and yeah, it, it's, an, yeah it's, it's a hard thing to explain to people, but I also don't like mods, generally speaking, for my own cars. But S2000, yeah. by this the way, sold for 28600 oh. United States dollars. I still think I that's, think that's well bought and well sold. It's actually. a lot of car for twenty eight six. I know it's underpowered, two hundred forty horsepower, but like it's just so much that's fun. Fu it is that's so a really fun car. Just screw around in that. And by the way, you can screw around in that for five years, bring it up to fifty thousand miles, and sell it for twenty eight thousand six hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> and you totally. won't spend any money on it either. It's going to be a reliable, reasonable car. Yeah, and that M four, you know, convertible stick. You know, it's not necessarily the purist choice but as a california cruiser you know weekend car if you've got kids i mean that's a nice that's a nice option the miles are low right um that's kind of the my price thought. is pretty reasonable every time an uh, M3, right now every time an m3 or an m4 convertible comes up it's always like oh it's a, it's a convertible but like i'm i'm sitting here in san diego thinking yeah oh, this is the one <laughs> this is actually what yeah. i would prefer dude if i could have had the countach with a open roof that would have been uh, so. The Rod cool. Stewart. That's the Rod Stewart. Have you ever seen his Countach? <laughs> no, he pulled the roof off it. Countach. He cut the roof off it. Yeah, and it looks amazing. It looks so cool. Have you <laughs> yeah. seen that um, Instagram that is like celebrity car? We talk about this. Oh uh, yeah, it, um, shoot. What's celebrity it car spotter. Yeah, it's yeah, something like that. Celebrity like car that, spotter. Like, yeah, but it's like period pictures of well celebrities in the. Some car. of them are period, and they posted oh, yeah. maybe six months ago. They posted yeah. Rod Stewart getting into his F40 on like Sunset Boulevard in 1992 <laughs> with like an yeah. old square body suburban, <laughs> you know, driving by, and like a Saab 900 driving by, and there's Rod Stewart getting his F40, and I'm like, damn. 
<laughs> Rod Stewart is a proper G when it comes to his cars. Now it helps that he's like five foot four. Yeah, you know, and can get into anything. I recently uh, saw without even messing though. up his hair, <laughs> which is probably um, another six inches. I recently saw he, something uh, though that I like saw him in like an S class. Like I, I get the sense that it's over or something. I saw some picture of him. Well, no, here's, yeah. here he is next to a LaFerrari and an and F8. So maybe he's still doing it. Yeah, I mean, he's probably he, – he, he, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Rod Stewart is buying the best new stuff that you can you can buy. I mean, that – you know, what, at the time that photo was taken, the F40 was the LaFerrari. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, it wasn't – And it's even got it – it's that. got, like, period-correct three plates and a Ferrari of Beverly Hills plate frame. Like, so he just – he bought it at a dealer and is driving it. Like, yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Just like well, so, you know, Leno – when Leno moved to Los Angeles – he had he only had one car and it was his Countach. That was just his car. Like it wasn't like you know a, 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 you know there's some lunatic in LA right now whose whose car is like an Aventador, right? right. And it's just their car. Right. And that was Leno in 83, but right. like to think about that today is like it's nuts. You and I have driven these cars right. now we're like how could anybody have done car? this? Like, totally. I, I remember seeing pictures of Deion Sanders in a Diablo. And at the time, it was like, damn. But now I'm thinking, he drove the piece of crap. That was his car. Like, his regular-ass car. <laughs> it was just, it nuts? must have been so hard. But when you were rich in 94, right. you bought a Diablo. Yeah. What well, the hell else? The Michael yeah. Jordan documentary is, like, one of the best yeah. ones. Because, like, just oh, all the cars. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that's, and it's just yeah. like, yeah, that was the hottest thing. So that's what he had. And, and it's now just, it's so yeah. cool to see. And now it's so baller. Matt, see. I came up with this I just went, bought this. Um, go ahead. Go what? ahead. Go ahead. All right. I was just saying I bought this amazing book that is a compilation of all the contemporary reviews of the Ferrari 328. It's like it's just like a book that's like 50 pages, every magazine review of the Ferrari 328. And it's I mean, it's amazing how similar they all are to each other. The Jeremy Clarkson one does not hold up. Oh, really? <laughs> Let's just say it's slightly problematic. Oh, God. But, but, but that notwithstanding, everyone was over and over and over how you could you could daily it you could da it's daily drivable really? it's an everyday car you could so use it to commute it because it's no one today would ever try to daily drive <laughs> that but that's what people no. have said about every successive exotic car probably ever since right. the 328 oh it's so much more right. livable oh it's so much more daily drivable <laughs> Yeah. Although I gotta say, yeah, when we yeah. did the 328 review and then I drove my 355 like right after that, it was stunning how much more usable it was. Like what was the 328? Yeah, the 355 compared yeah. to the 328. I agree. I mean, it's two the, generations, but still, the 328 was the one thing that made yeah, it, it tiny. difficult was it was tight inside. It was <sighs> so, so tight, yeah. tight inside. Yeah, mine is small, and I, you know, in mine, I uh, I cut the seat rails. I did what they call the Magnum PI mod. So I literally. Yeah hook the seat out and cut an inch and a half of metal out of the seat rail so it sits it sits lower and it's not much but it does make a difference yeah. and i won't say i daily that car but i actually do use that car as a car it's a usable and car it's, it's not bad it's it's and it, it feels like an old car it's not like it feels yeah. like a 355 in any way no i agree um, but I like that it feels like an old car, but for the most part, it's re as reliable right. or, you know, close to it as a, as a modern car. That's and that's about, what I want out of that car. Yeah. That's the thing about 328. It's like a relatively reliable vehicle that you can yeah. actually use. Cool. So M4, oh, M4 sold. sold for 41. M4, I think that's well sold and well bought. 41,750. Yeah. Someone's going to drive around in a six speed manual M4 cab with TEs. Yeah. Um, Matt, tell us right, again car. a lot of car for 40 grand. It, it is, it's it is a, a that's, a, car that's a, a fast car, car. car, it's a manual. I mean, it, you know, it's that's a nice car for 40k. Our next vehicle coming up here is a 2006 Audi S4 sedan, six speed manual in Texas. Matt, you remember? I had car? one of these, really. <laughs> I had really? one, a, yeah, a, B, I had a B6 one. or a B7. Uh, mine was a B6, just like this, but silver. Um, and I had the, uh, the other wheels. These okay. are the, these are the cooler wheels. I had the, the regular wheels, but this was such a great highway car. The gearing was perfect for highway pulls. Yeah. Oh, and it's the four spoke steering wheel too. <laughs> Everyone wanted to upgrade to the RS four three spoke. <laughs> and I had the four spoke also, and it drove me nuts. You I know, wished I had the three spoke. It's, that's the thinking man's 
steering wheel. <laughs> that wood grain, though. Can we talk about the wood grain in that joint? <laughs> yeah, that. that is the thinking oh, man's that trim. Wood, that is the thinking man's trim. Matt you, Matt, you don't understand. This car is white with wood and the force poke. This is the thinking. Oh, my God. This is the enthusiast's choice. No, the, this is a guy who's smoking a cigar each way on the way to work and back, dude. <laughs> at, the, at the Audi meets that are like the Porsche meets that you probably go to in L.A. where they just talk about the same cars but they're different colors. In 30 right. years, this is going to be cool. The guys with the three-spoke wheels are going to yeah. be like, damn, yo, you yeah. got a four-spoke and wood grain? Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Will the Burlwood like, ever come back? That's cr I, I don't think I've ever seen Burlwood before on an S4. <laughs> I don't amazing. think I have either. <laughs> Maybe he wow, did a Burlwood I conversion. Mean, that's crazy. Dude, that's it's like that's, that's like because they don't make the A8 in stick. <laughs> <laughs> Burlwood. It was the same power track. That, I love that knob for the the knob for the sunroof. Oh, for the sunroof. That was, that was which had which had inexplicably like 19 positions. You could like twist it a little more open or a little more open or a little more open all the way up until it was just all the way out. <laughs> and I bet Burlwood man had his favorite setting too. He's like, I really <laughs> yep. like it on four. Dude, this is <laughs> this is exactly how I would spec this thing. Now the <laughs> B6s. So the pre facelift car, the B6s, which were oh. This is a oh four to oh six oh four to oh six oh four to oh six yeah because this is a B seven they had the timing uh, chain there was a five, no there was a, f a five and a wasn't there a half in there somewhere yeah but you know look everything's challenging <laughs> somewhere there was a <laughs> but half this is the B seven right yeah this is the seven um, yeah early seven it's like the very beginning of the B seven yeah. The, yeah. the timing chain guide issue wasn't as big of a deal, wasn't it? Or did they all just have it from the problem? No, they all had it. They're all, they're all, it's all a problem. You gotta, you gotta do that major, 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 major service to, to get that handled. It's yeah, really it's, expensive. It's where it's located on the back of the engine. But I think this, this guy yeah. also posted videos of it starting and stuff, which is, which is helpful. But yeah, that's, that's the thing. These cars are so inexpensive because I think that, that has to be one of the huge influencing factors yeah. is that maintenance is just like, you know, it's going to happen some at some point. But at once it's yeah. done, you can cruise around with your Burlwood Burl Wood and your four and your stogie and just like just yeah. killing it. <laughs> Dude, mine I, I mine drove so great and it, and I put a, a cat back exhaust on it. I think it was the Miltech Mil uh, yeah. exhaust. Oh, that's what Good. people do. And it's it sounded it had that that almost like an E thirty nine M five engine that cami. Yep. Uh, sound up front with that the, it that sort a, of it's crazy they even get a rumble in the in back this, in an A4 body car like by modern standards that yeah. is insane. Especially, Wait, I don't know when last time you saw one was, but the, the car is tiny and it was yeah. back then too. And the engine bay was too. That yeah. came there. We have to go to the M2. There's an M2 that's ending also. 2017 right. BMW M2 six speed car. manual. This yep. is a special one. It's a one owner car with only 8,800 miles. So if you want an untouched and M2, a Dyna, it's got some Dyna upgrades. Right. As well. Yeah, exactly. And the right color too. Such a phenomenal color mm -hmm. car. Um, what was that called? I like uh, these M2s no, a yeah. lot. Yeah, they're cool. They're cool. They're not as they're I not like just, cheap yet. Yeah. They're not well, cheap. Well, I don't know if they'll ever get cheap because they're great looking. They're great to drive. Um, I know they made a lot of them, but the next the, the generation that's out now is so heinous looking <laughs> that people will just want these. It's not like these aren't modern cars. You know, yeah. These no, I agree. Play, they're like, like good enough. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. This car, um, uh, we, we've sold 66 M2s. We, we like no somehow way. became like the M2 place. I don't really understand why. We somehow have become like the BMW place in general. Look at all those Long Beach blue M2s. We probably sold these. Lots of <laughs> ridiculous. It's like 5 million Long Beach blue M2s. We've sold a ton, ton, ton of these M2s. We know exactly what they sell for. They're all pretty equipped relatively similarly. There's a few differences, but we've sold a bunch of them. Now, I personally like the new M2. I think it's a great car. Go ahead. I like driving it. I just don't like looking when at it. When you drive I, it, I you don't looking. have to look at it. That's one of the benefits. It's like the Ferrari 612. When you're inside <laughs> it. <laughs> yes. I, know. I understand that perspective. I do. I pers yeah, I personally, I, I don't know if it's just I'm just a BMW fanboy, but I, I'm not as bothered by the looks of the cars as much. I also don't care because I'm not, my era of BMW is the E39 M5, the E46 M3. Like those are the cars I really love. So I'm not as concerned with the new stuff, but the fact that you can get a manual transmission in a small car with six cylinder power. Like this it, is it. You know, it's over. It's yeah. over. The yeah. six-speed manual, six-cylinder engine. This is it. The next one is going to be automatic and plug-in hybrid. So, like, you can complain about the look all you want to, but, like, this is it. 
This is it. It's over after this. The C C sixty three has a four cylinder turbo. <laughs> have you driven that, by the way, the new C sixty three? No, they you know the press cars have still not come to California. Really? Yeah, they're, the people went to Europe to drive it and, and all that, but nobody in California has actually driven it yet. So I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. I wish I could have gone. Why, did you? No. Did you, did you drive one? Oh, yeah. Mercedes-Benz okay, USA doesn't really. They were really... just blowing smoke. <laughs> no, Merce- uh, the only brand that really has never like, really worked with me that much is, M- is Mercedes-Benz. I still work with a dealer oh, for Mercedes-Benz. They're like, this guy with his stupid shorts. We don't want to deal with this. Well, we thing. just had, I just did performance car of the year for road and track, and we had the new M2 as one of the entrants. And and it it does, it, it's very fast. We had a six-speed car. The shifter was was nice. You know, the interior I liked. Um, it, 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 it Without, the traction control puts in work on yeah. that car because when you turn it off, that car is sideways every single corner of the racetrack. Yeah, interesting. Um, huh. Huh. I didn't realize that. A, it is a crazy amount of power for uh, not enough tire. <laughs> interesting. Um, I went to that and, press launch. I, didn't, I only kind of drove it around Phoenix. Um, that press launch was shared with the XM which is one of the very worst right. cars on sale today. So it was kind of a mixed bag, that press launch. <laughs> they, uh, Road and Track, you know, I do these events with them. I lead these, uh, you know, guided tours of good roads and good restaurants and whatever, and, and I make the routes, and it's a fun gig. Go to experiences.roadandtrack.com if you're interested. But anyway, Damn. they they were going to get me a uh, an XM for this one that's happening in two weeks, and I outright refused the car. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I'm not driving you that. Know, that's, you you no, know it's bad not. when the car looks like that, and the looks are about the eighth biggest problem with it. <laughs> I still haven't seen one. they got me a black wing, so we are... We are oh, damn. Oh, one of my hey, by the way, yeah, yeah. Road and Track Performance Car of the Year, maybe you can't announce yet, but I'm sure it was the Storado. Tell us more about the Storado winning Road and Track Performance Car of the Year. Uh, I can't announce the winner, but we had a Storado there, which oh, we kind of got as like a goof. And I... I, you know, I, I talked to you after the launch. I love that car so much. I think it's the best Lamborghini on sale right now. It is, you know, Lamborghini is at their best when they're doing something very stupid. Yeah. And this is very stupid in the best way. But I was able to do enormous slides at 90 to 100 miles an hour on the racetrack and it was just the most fun i don't know if you saw that video on the instagram of me just cutting it. through the grass on everybody <laughs> saw that video <laughs> so silly dude the thing they is were, the, there's actually that's a that's for a drone shot for the magazine the track kind of makes this s curve and they wanted me to make the opposite s curve <laughs> With the uh, with the Serato, so that was what that was for. <laughs> the, so great. The th- you know, I will tell you. By the way, I mentioned this briefly in my Countach video, but the Serato, um, I got to build an allocation for one. I was I, I drove it with same as you at that launch, and I was like, yeah. this is the coolest thing I have ever been a part and of. You- you and hit me up afterwards, and you were like, "I'm getting one." I was like, I "What called, color? What I color?" I called my <laughs> contacts at the dealers. I they got me a build, which was not easy. They um they I spec'd it online. Like I spent all this time, like, what do I do about the interior and all this stuff? And then they called me, and they were like, "All right, we need your deposit." And I and I was like going back and forth between Strato and Countach, and I called them, and I was like, "I'm sorry, guys." I, I have to buy a Countach. I just like love the Strato. I know this is my only chance to order uh, like my own supercar probably ever, but like I have to buy a Countach. And they were like, all right, we got like a list of 18 other people, so <laughs> screw you. <laughs> you like feel bad. They're like, okay, bye. Well, see ya. I think like, their point was like, you could have flipped this thing and made money, you idiot. But like, I just, yeah. uh, it was, it was, the money was there for either the Countach no, you, or the Strato. You, right. did, you did the right thing. You, you made the right move. I'm but happy, but it is, as far as modern cars go, that is that is as good as it gets from Lamborghini right now. Um, we just had um, a, another car sell, by the way, which is this 2013 Panamera GTS. Can you go to that? I want to talk about this for a brief second. That's nice. Dude, this car sold for 30 grand. Are you aware that wow. Panamera's cost that now? That car was probably $140,000. Yeah, <laughs> it was 100 plus. It's a GTS. So the GTS came out in 13. I had one as a company yeah. car. So it was a, it was a big naturally aspirated V8 with dual clutch. This is like yeah. a serious car. Like it's a really it's a great legitimately car. good car and it sold for 30. And I know it's like, oh, it's depreciating. Is it going to be reliable? I do not hear bad things about these cars. I hear good things no. about PDK. I hear that PDK holds up, continues to hold up well as it ages. Like to me, this is so much car. It's Panamera's so much car for that's a steal. To this day, I still kick around like replacing my daily with a $30,000 V8 Panamera and just being like, screw it. This is, I'm just going to have fun. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like they're great cards. They're, the GTS is the right one. It's yeah. got enough power. It sounds great. The PDK is awesome. Although even the interior turbos, holds even up. Even turbo cell, because the turbo came out in 10. Kenan, pull up our Panamera turbo cells. Mm -hmm. The turbo came out in 10. And um, we've had there's an 11 turbo we sold yeah, for 23. I don't know how many wow. how many miles are on that. It's got a front plate, so uh, is that an Ontario thing? Oh, it's Virginia. 90, uh, it's almost 100,000 miles. It's got big miles. 22k. Like, 22. Like, this car's 500 that's horsepower. This car is 500 horsepower dual clutch. It's zero to 16 three and a half. It's as fast as a Carrera GT. That's awesome. <laughs> this is a that's serious awesome. car. Yeah, yeah. If you if you're gonna buy a, a ten year old luxury sedan, this is definitely the one to buy. Versus, I mean, a 2013 S class or a 2013 Seven Series, it's totally. like not even a question. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That is a hundred thousand percent true. Totally. Okay, agree. so the next one we have this E36 M3 uh, finishing oh. Estoril, uh, manual transmission. Thirteen grand. And a store with 13 grand with 200,000 miles. 2,000 miles. Yeah, there's the there's here's a car. Yeah. Here's a car that is rocketed up. Like E36M3s, everybody knew they were going to go up. And I mean, they're still affordable. Like this is going to sell for 15 or 18 or whatever. But like they went up. I mean, this was, I had one. I bought and sold one for eight grand. Like I bought eight mine years for, ago. yeah, I bought mine for six, I think. Yeah. And it was. I once, uh, I once said in a video that all E36M3s are in $8,000 driving experience. <laughs> And now, whenever I sometimes I go places and I and people people will like <laughs> drive by an E30 M3 or E36 M3 and yell at me eight thousand dollars. It happened at Pebble Beach, dude. I was at Pebble Beach and someone drove by and yelled eight thousand dollars at me. <laughs> I, you know, I never have anybody say negative things. That's so funny. I can't believe that. That's amazing. I'll, I, I'll I, stand by it though. It is. Do you really think so? I, I feel like this yeah. is one of those cars like the Countach where as cars become more sanitized and more boring, I get that this car is not all that fast and like a little squidgy, whatever, but like I think it's a stick shift. It's well, a I naturally think... aspirated stick shift. Like it's just the this is the type of car that I just I don't care that it's not all that fast and that it's run reliable in some ways and blah blah blah. It just is different. For, like a new BMW is just you push a button, the, you open the door, it shifts into park automatically. Okay. I think with this I, car, I hear you, but to me, they just feel chintzy. It, you know, E30s yeah. well, felt like they're built. E30s and E46s both feel like they're built to last forever, and these just don't. I you know, do. I agree with that. Um, but I will say the the benefit of this car is like you know, the S52 is a relatively reliable engine. The only um, reliable BMW M powertrain ever. I, Quote me on that. Uh, the <laughs> only. Reliable. My S62 has been fantastic, but my M5. But we'll move yeah, on. how much you in that? How much you spent on the motor of that car? What did? What was the last? Receipt? I did just replace the timing chain, guys. What yeah, did that was, cost? At, at two hundred and twenty-six thousand miles, they needed to be replaced, and that was thirteen seven. Thirteen thousand. But I also did a bunch of other stuff and suspension stuff. How much? There. How so much money like, have you spent on that S62 over the years? <laughs> Not much more than that, other than oil changes. That and you like put an alter. Excuse me. You put an alternator in it. The rear main seal was leaking. There's so been yeah. There are a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> Not much my, more than my that. My general it has manager here at the shop bought. <laughs> my general manager here at the shop has a real problem with cars, and just bought. Uh, the guy who who sold that uh, beautiful B5 yeah. Avant A4, which which was a re I think a record for B5 A4s on your it was site a nice actually. One. It was a really nice one. It was a really good one. But he just bought he after selling that Audi, he bought an E39 M5 in steel gray, which is yep. apparently very very rare. It's BMW individual and color it, on that car. Yeah. yeah, and it was uh it is the cleanest one you've ever seen. But within a month of owning it, he had to put some 20 grand into it. Which is wild because, so I, I had seen that car. My friend Ryan at E39 Source had worked on that thing. And the previous owner had also put a lot of money into it. <laughs> there you so, go. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. but the thing is, like, it's, they are robust once you do. Like, it, oh, it, yeah. it will last. Is, you will get the, the money out of it. This is the cry of the BMW owner. The, once you spend the forty-seven thousand dollars to bulletproof the engine that they should have done from the factory, it's a pretty reliable well, powertrain. Hey, glass houses, Mister Kuntosh. But the, the, the reality is, like, it's like, yeah, I, I understand their maintenance every cars, but back to the E36. Like, the oh yeah, I think let's get back to the E36. The only reliable powertrain B BMW M ever produced. <laughs> I could do yeah, rod bearings. True. I could do it's probably in, true. until M goes electric, <laughs> and even then they will find a way to have rod bearing failure. <laughs> I'll I'll give I'll give I'm <laughs> kind of into the sedans. I kind of I am kind of into the E36 sedans. I think it's a cool look, but every 
every time I've gone in any E36, it's like even the nicest ones, they still are about to fall apart. It yeah, feels the, like the interiors me. on those cars, I, I do agree. It was one of the reasons why I got rid of yeah. it was just a rattlebox. The 90s but they, in it was general, fun to drive. That was, that was my biggest problem with my RS2. It was just the 90s, the early mid 90s, they just like discovered plastic and they were like, what can we do with this <laughs> incredible? <laughs> All right, so we got a so Viper. Got a Viper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so the next car is a, a final generation Viper, 6,200 miles. Um, I, I, I've, I still have never driven. It's the only Viper generation I haven't driven. What do you think of these, Matt? I think they're great and also they're meh at the same time. I mean, the idea of the Viper is great. These last generation cars are built really well. The mm -hmm. interiors are really nice. Yep. They're they're known for reliability. They they are very reliable cars. They're obviously very fast cars, and you know big engines, stick shift. You know that's that's the formula, right? But everyone I know who has owned one um, has it's not really lasted more than a couple of years because they actually get kind of bored of them. Yeah. And even after I drove the press car for a week, I was like at the end I was sort of like, no, oh, okay, okay, that was that was fun, and and here you go and. And um, yeah. but I think they make good long term investments. This one uh, did not, I guess, sell. Yeah, bid to um, twelve. One of the things I've noticed actually about these Gen Five Vipers, they had a crazy run. Did you notice this? Mm -hmm. The last oh, two yeah, years, they, they had a crazy run. run. I mean, they were selling yeah. for, the, especially the end of the line individual the cars. The ACRs and they stuff. They were yeah. selling for two hundred plus. Like it was a wild, wild situation, and that has come to an end i more than almost yeah. any other car actually these last gen vipers have really come to an end um they've slowed back down to like where in my mind it makes more sense that they belong and so i think what you're seeing here yeah. i don't know if this is a market correct result i haven't paid that much attention to the market but it failing to hit reserve not really all that surprising to me i think this is kind of a new normal for this viper market I mean, look, for 112, let's just say this car did sell for 112,000. It didn't, but let's say it did. Someone got a hell of a car. Yeah. Exotic looks, manual gearbox, very fast, low enough miles that V10 it'll still stick. feel very yeah. new. V10 stick. And you, you could see. probably put another 5,000, 10,000 miles in that car for free. Yep. Um, yeah, the thing, you know, about, a, the thing about Vipers that I find so interesting, like I have been predicting the rise in Viper values for years, and I'm going to stop doing it because they just don't seem like they're going. <laughs> like Gen 1 Vipers. Gen 1s. Gen 1s every, are so I've been saying for 10 years, 30 grand is insane that those cost that. And now they're 35, which I think was inflation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Purely inflation. They did rise for a while, but yeah, then they dropped back up. But again, that's an a, a car that's known for being difficult to drive. Um, but yeah, I, but, that's I, but the people, fun I it. know, I agree, I agree with you. I love the way those cars drive personally, but like, it just has a reputation around it that I think that, that kind of like pushes it down. It's the same thing if you bought one, people would come to you and say, "Oh, don't you know those things are horrible to drive?" Just like the Countach. Yeah, but, they probably would, but, but they'd be wrong. Look, just a like hell the of a lot of look for in the '30s. The problem yeah, is people don't know when they say they're horrible to drive. They don't know what I want from a car. Right. Wait, what right. I want from a car is like not a Senna or not have, a 980. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have a career GT and a Ford GT. It's like, I'm well, and looking then, for And like I said in that Twitter comment yesterday, Matt, like, yeah, that's you my have type. a type. Like, I want cars yeah. that are kind of like Mysteria and are very analog and are manuals. And I don't really yeah. care what people say. Right. I, I'm with you. I, I have a type as well. And, and, and it does, I don't care if you think it's good or not. It's, right. it's, it's what I'm seeking out of a car. And every time I've driven a Viper, it it's never, uh, it's just never it impressed me in any per one particular way enough enough to. Uh, it's like a marginally better Corvette. I mean, is is really what it is. Uh, for usually a lot more Especially money. Especially the Gen 5s, which I think didn't quite have the crazy look. The reason I like the Gen 1 and 2 cars is they look more insane. A Gen 1 or Gen 2 Viper turns heads. The Gen 5s don't really as much. Gen 1 on three spokes just looks... Gen 1 on three spokes, you're still like, damn. Yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, every I, time. I've, uh, the last year, I've sort of been poking around Gen 1 Vipers, very early cars. Um, but uh, I, uh, it's just... Yeah. I also need the thing to be fundamentally put together well. I, I just won't put up with garbage quality. Right. And, and the so. Gen 1s are especially bad. I had a Gen 2, which was a GTS, and it was better. Like, it was still a lot of Chrysler mm. trash plastic, but the Gen 1s are like, oh, my God. Really bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're out of the prototyping department. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, next so, car yeah. ending is a Subaru SVX. Matt, please tell us your thoughts on the Subaru SVX. You know... It's on a very short list of a cars I've never driven, really? but I love really? how they look. I well, love how they look. It's just an amazing, weird, bizarre thing, and and uh, 
and I and I it's a it's a really really neat car. Any Subaru collector. Uh, and shout out to this guy's garage yeah. wherever he's. Parking he's got a giant thing. warehouse, and the only thing in the warehouse is a Back to the Future Toyota truck, a Back to the Future, <laughs> a Z three hundred ZX, a Bronco. What is the other? And a, and a dually, which he's hauling <laughs> with. Bro, what is, this, what is this guy doing this dude over is here? He's paying way I'm too much on rent. Oh, there's oh, a look, fire okay, truck. Oh. <laughs> A Volkswagen, uh, Who is this? like synchro fire truck, and what is that weird what, van? That looks know, illegal. That looks too new. Uh, whatever that is, uh, <laughs> looks like Bizarre it's just on the cusp. Don't show that. He's gonna get raided. <laughs> is this in Canada? Been. This no, might it's be, in Chattanooga. In it's Canada? it's it's an importer in Chattanooga. I think he just does weird oh, reports. Okay. Although this is a U.S. car. Um, I have driven the SVX, and I will say, looking at it is more exciting than driving it. It, it, it was a cool car. I think the biggest problem was they were all automatics. You know, it's funny. In yeah. that era, there were all these 90s Japanese cars, and everybody remembers the big ones. The NSX, the 3000GT, the 300ZX, the Supra, yep. the RX-7. Nobody remembers the SVX <laughs> was the forgotten it, it one. It does get close over. They were all automatics. But it was the biggest engine in a Subaru. I think that may still be true because there's a 3.3-liter flat six. And um, they were all automatics. So it was supposed to be like a touring car, whereas like the RX-7 and them were like more fun. Right. And so what happens is the transes die because Subaru didn't have a trans that really could deal with power. And so people swap them with sticks. And then I, I imagine it livens the car up quite a bit. It's a pretty That easy could swap. be really interesting. I think, it, I think a manual one could be a good time if, you, a, if it's doable. Put yeah. a WRX motor in there and a stick shift and you didn't get those weird windows. You could flex on yeah, everybody. Yeah, they're fun. I mean, they're funky. I, they're, it's, if, it's, if you went to a, a Radwood or something with one, you know, that's that's what it's for, right? Right. Absolutely. Yep. At the, especially at this stage. But yeah, I always thought they were really cool looking. They do. Just they look so them. cool. Are they, they, it, they're Jajaro, aren't they? I believe they are uh, I think so. Giorgetto I th Jajaro design. I think that is true. All the weird stuff with windows yeah. like that were. I think they were. Yeah. And the Japanese were, at that time were always looking to the Italian design houses for some legitimacy. Like they were like, yeah, they <laughs> what can we do to prove to people that like we can make a beautiful car? Much as the Chinese are now. They're, they, you know who's Jujaro's biggest customer in Pininfarina? It's like Chinese automakers who are like, yeah. we need to stop with the copying stuff. We need to have like beautiful cars. And the way to get that legitimacy is to go to Pininfarina, who is known for yeah. building beautiful cars, and be like, hey – you know what do you got yeah in like in the 70s the japanese were copying like our muscle cars our 60s muscle cars yeah. right and then yeah. and then in the 80s and 90s they started copying the italians uh, a bit and uh, and and now the chinese are on it the greatest example of this of course is the can you pull are you is your screen the one live mm -hmm. the daewoo matisse pull this up Go, just google it daewoo matisse <laughs> we're off on a tangent here <laughs> but i love this do you know this car matt uh, the, my wife used to sell Daewoo's in college. <laughs> yeah, that was their she college. Was, that was that their was like the, selling plan. Is that was their marketing? Yeah, she me. sold some, some Daewoo's. This is a Jujaro design. <laughs> Click on any one of them. This is a Jujaro design. They went oh, to Jujaro yeah. and they said, yeah. "Hey, we're we're tr desperately trying to be legitimate." What can you do for us? And there was a Hyundai too called the Matrix. Go pull up the Hyundai Matrix. We're really that's <laughs> hilarious. I don't care. I gotta bring you back. Cause, yeah. Um, Hyundai Matrix. Oh, you know, someone on my podcast last week asked me what I thought uh, Jujaro's weakest design ever was, and I we said it was the 1992 Eagle Premier, oh, but the no. Matisse might actually be worse. <laughs> the, the Matisse was worse for sure. The Hyundai Matrix. This is a Pininfarina design, that's and there, yeah, no, yeah. that's the second gen. You have okay. to go to the first gen, yeah. the really beautiful one. Yes, and the the real design <laughs> element here, the real kicker on this car, is that the rear end window for some reason is six inches higher than. The <laughs> <laughs> no that was Pininfarina's cut. Yes, like look at contrast. that. And you know yeah, what's in that, that spot? What's oh, the Pininfarina <laughs> logo? That is exactly right. And when you see these on the road in Italy, which is the only place they That's sold hilarious. them, they're, they, you, they have Pininfarina logos, and you're like, damn. That's just like, like Hyundai went to Pininfarina, and they go, listen, we got windows for an SUV. But we need you. We got extras. But we need you to build us a small car that these huge windows can be used on. What is? What can you do for us here, Pinot Farina? That, that so SVX funny. sold for fifty five hundred bucks. Fifty five hundo for a ninety four. You know what? You want to cool get a car. Radwood trophy? Yeah. In yeah, a reasonably reliable trophy. car? Like, all right, there you go. Like, Show up a Radwood 5500 bucks. Especially if you live anywhere where it snows. Like that's that's a that's a yeah. choice. It's not bad. It's not bad. Now, next one is a 2001 996 yep. Carrera for Cabriolet. Six With manual. IMS, it's a manual. Dude, this this is, car this in is today's market is worth probably forty six or $47,000, I'm guessing. 
That's my that's my guess. We've sold IMS tons of them. is done. Looks nice. What are you guys getting here? I think that the days of the regular non -tur non turbo non SSL and for in the forties are kind of over. I really? think the 996 market slid back down. It's funny because I saw them shooting up like everybody did when everything shot up. And I was like, wow, the 996 is finally having its day. This is it. It's happening finally after we all talked about it for years. And then they went back down. And turbos mm. didn't really, although turbos they did a little. Didn't. But narrow body cars um, are like back to kind of a relatively normal. It's going to sell for more than it would have three years ago, but so is everything. And it didn't have yeah. its day in the sun like I thought. I thought like, okay, 993s are 90. Yeah, the, so, one, that, the one that's yeah, gone yeah, is yeah. the GT2. The GT2s are just absolutely out of this world now. Yeah, GT2s Well, are but they're, they're rare. There's only a couple of hundred of right. GT2s. That, that makes sense. Man. But this, I'll tell you what, if someone gets this thing for, you know, 35 grand or something, you've got a, a, it's an amazing a, a car. great condition car. It'd be really nice to drive. And Low with miles. the hard top and all wheel drive year round, Yep, you're around good times. That's totally. all right. No, uh, it's absolutely a great car. And these 996s, that's the thing about them. I love these cars so much. Mm -hmm. I've been the biggest 996 defender and fan in the entire world for so many years. They're just great cars. They don't look cool, I get it, but they're great, fun. They really did improve on the driving. They're like great cars to drive. Drives like a yeah. Porsche. Yeah. Yeah. They it 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 they are very nice to drive, especially compared to whatever else 35 grand is i mean is it's this or like a what a brz you know what i mean come on it's you're you know you're you're in the game you, you know get, you're you you're get, what kind of corvette can you get for 35 can you get a c7 a really Z06? nice c a, a c7 z06 hell no you could get a a, rec, a c7 z51 probably you could get a c6 z06 yeah yeah a c6 uh, miles on it. can you get a c6 yeah. z06 for 35 yeah we've yeah. sold a couple damn yeah you can C5. you can that is such a wow, god yeah. that is so much car you want to talk about cars it that is. are so much car you know i feel like everybody's been talking about the c5 z06 for so long they've kind of slept on the c6 z06 getting to a point that is like kind of affordable and reasonable c6s are much nicer cars than yeah. c5 i owned a c5 and it was Real chintzy. I yeah. mean, it, fast, but real chintzy. Yeah, the interior and is not what you're really Wow, 32, 32 grand? 32 sells well, a lot of car for 32. Well, Boom. well, well bought. That is a phenomenal car for 32,000 totally. bucks. You're not going to lose money on that. Clean Carfax, six-speed manual, low miles. Like, that is just... Got a, the hard top, too. It's yeah. an excellent, it's excellent yeah. car. Oh, That's look a at great, great buy for that kind of money. Yeah. Right, we're going to look at one more. It's an E46 M3. We all love the E46 M3. Matt had one. Kenan spent his I whole world I just sold mine, them. yeah. Yeah, you sold yours. Are you sad? No, because I bought. I used the money to buy the that NSX that I absolutely adore. Do you not feel like you're going to have the same problem with the NSX that you had with your E46 M3, which is that it's too nice and you're not going to want to drive it? No, here's why. One, I spent the money to go full PPF on it, nose to tail. And two... The 05 NSX they, is a very low production car, yep. and so while yes, it does have low miles, it's I, I just hit eighteen thousand miles on it. At least most of the value of that car comes from its rarity and not from its mileage. Whereas with my E46 M3, all of the value came from its low mileage and right. its condition. Plus, and you're, so you're in in a couple of years, in ten years, you're going to look back if you have, still have that NSX and say your cost basis was so low to begin with because there'd be so much more yeah. desirable then that it didn't matter that you put on another ten thousand miles because that's yeah. how I feel about my Ford GT. Miles are free because the car's worth fifty percent more than paid for. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Yeah. And that's kind of the yeah. nice position to be. Of course, you're in that position with your Countach, for which I'm eternally jealous. <laughs> Biggest yeah, I was early I on made. that one. I know. Man. Not early not early enough, but still pretty early. I will never <laughs> yeah. forget when you bought that car. We bought our, we bought our cars the same month. In, in 2018, I bought my Ford GT in 18 and September of 18, mm. and you bought your Countach. And I'll never forget thinking, Farrah's crazy. He's buy, I spent all that money on that Countach. I wish I could stretch for that, but I'll never do it. It's too much. too crazy. And look at me now. I had to spend double. Because you couldn't have afforded not to. <laughs> couldn't have afforded not to. That's become my phrase whenever someone says, I can't afford. I'm always like, I t I've been telling, there's a buddy of ours, I've been telling to get a stick guy out. He's like, I can't afford it. I'm like, dude, you can't afford not to. <laughs> it's going to yeah. double your money. <laughs> you can't afford to yeah. double your money. <laughs> yep. He yeah. always says houses, car, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. Day. <laughs> yeah. So the BZ46 is like, 
I really did enjoy driving it. Like yeah. it's a it's a beautiful car to drive. They're yep. so nice and yep. they're they're put together really well. The yep. interiors hold up really well. And that engine is um, just so good. The the thr- it just yeah. ITBs just make such a difference and that engine is such a sweetheart and just revs so high and sounds so amazing. The, yeah. the feel of the buttons and switches in that car is so good. Yeah, That's the general, thing. Yeah, that era general. of BMW, the late 90s early 2000s, like everything you touch it's the exact opposite of that E36 we were talking about. Like <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah. The interiors were weren't the most beautiful they were actually very simple and functional if yeah. you really look like it was a basic it wasn't like audi was already doing nicer stuff with interiors in terms of design but bmw was just like everything felt good i love pressing the yeah. turn signals in bmws from this era i think it is the finest turn signal stock feel in the entire car industry <laughs> everybody makes fun of me for this yeah but i really no, oh. I, I bought a uh, e46 wagon as like a project car for oh, when yeah. Zach and I did that all cars go to heaven three yeah. and it had 220,000 miles on it and I bought it for twenty eight hundred dollars <laughs> and it was still and I bought it as a joke. I mean literally it was like a joke throwaway car but I drove it around during the shooting for a week and I was like you know if this was just like my car. That wouldn't be bad at yeah. all. Like this was, it was really, it didn't rattle or squeak. Like you know, now that it you was, say it, it I, I know it like great. an unusual number of people who just daily a random base model E46, and that's just yeah, kind of their I life. Just, I, when I <laughs> and lived, they have nice cars. I had a 330, and they're XI. fine. It's like also rusty, rusty and tired, and had 200,000 miles, but it drove great. It just and was that great. was a reliable yeah. car. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, I got a buddy here with a Vantage who's got a, the E46 325i <laughs> daily, <laughs> daily, just like doing it. Okay, we're getting As some. A matter of fact, if you went down to Rally Ready Driving School outside of Austin, you could take a class in that very <laughs> wagon, which I sold to them <laughs> when I was done with it, and it's still down there. It was an automatic, and they kept it so that people could take their rally school who couldn't drive stick because all their other cars were stick, oh. and they wanted to give them an automatic option. How so did it's you still find down this there. place? How did you find this place to sell it to? We filmed our our off road rally stage bit there, uh, okay. and in exchange for the facility rental, Zach and I just gave them our cars. They got the short end of that stick. <laughs> no, they're using they're still using both. Uh, they're, they're bo- both the cars are still going. They only had the to cash. give us their rally stage for like ten hours. <laughs> it's awesome. Still feel like they got the short end. Of that stick. <laughs> Automatic three twenty five i wagon with probably three hundred thousand miles on it. But they tell no, but everybody. It had like, but it had like a four thousand uh, dollar rally suspension kit on it. That's why. That's why they bought it. And the thing everyone was, who the comes to the tough. rally school, they tell Zach Clapman sat in this car. That's yeah. what they say to him. <laughs> His um, was the Crown Vic with a donk kit on it. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Trust me, I remember. Thad was in it. I watched the whole thing. I thought it was amazing. It was very, it was very fun. Um, we, this M3 might go cheap. Twenty two grand for a for a clean E46 M3, even with sixty thousand miles. That's all right. Twenty out of twenty three now. Fast bidding. This is a cool yeah, car. Bids. Um, these Can have we see gone some up. Photos. Who's in charge of the photos? Yeah. Let's see a few photos. These have gone up in value, by the way, and uh, they have not come back down. E forty six M threes are are doing a strong, strong, strong. It is hard to find clean ones. We've also noticed that we were we were talking yeah. earlier about how mods don't help. I've noticed that stick swapped E forty six M threes. You actually get more mm-hmm. than a dollar back. We've sold oh, some that's, that's like, holy crap, this is like way more than an automatic ever, you know, and they yeah. stick swaps. You really do make the money back. Anybody just, the, did, um, people just want to these cars, gears? you know what? They, they seem common until you try to go find a good one. <laughs> exactly. And then it becomes very hard to find. That's how I ended up buying that insanely expensive one was that it seemed like, oh, I should be able to find one of these. And after like a month, I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just calling EAG because I like I just couldn't find one. And yeah. so I had to spend all the money in the world to get a, a great one. Yep. That makes um, sense. When you sold it, did you get all the money in the world back for it? Yeah. Yeah, I got out of it for even money. Really? I did. Wow. I had, that's I had 1,600 free miles on that car. Because one thing I've noticed about the EAG cars, when EAG sells them, they have this amazing pedigree, and so they bring real money. But when three owners later sells them, they're like, no, really, it was yeah. an EAG car. We swear, we swear. People, it doesn't have the same like panache as like buying from them. You know. I think the documentation they give you is extraordinary. And the fact that I was selling it in the exact same condition yeah, yeah, yeah. with only a thousand more miles on it, I think they pretty much were uh, were all right. And that, that oh, look at this. this is, what did the M3 get? 23,250. Didn't quite get there. 
We're moving mm. to the E30. We so. want to. All right, we'll do this one. We're stopping after this E30. Stop after this one. Okay. We're stopping after these this E30. These are rad. I love these I cars. I love They're so this cool. car so much. I love this car more than I love Canon. When I was a kid growing up in Colorado, these were everywhere. All-wheel drive 3 Series. It was like what you yeah. had because nothing had all-wheel drive back then. No cars did. It wasn't a thing. And so these were everywhere, but they are gone. Now you never see them anymore. It looks so good. This with one the is cool. Rack and the yellow lights. It looks great. Yeah. Yeah, the yellow lights are like French market. Yep. French market. We talk about that all the time. <laughs> the French. I put. Well, you know what you got to do, Doug. I I did it on mine. You got to get the French market um, fo Corello fog lights for your Countach. It looks sick. Do I not have that? There's. What do I it's, have? Oh, are your aren't yours white? I don't know. Don't you have clear? I think yours are clear. <laughs> I did mine. I got the red, uh, the yellow ones for mine. The OE, they're OEM, but they're from the French market, and they look amazing. They're Interesting. Really cool. I do I like the French. When when I was searching for a Carrera GT, we ran across a French market F40 that still had yellow. It's like, Damn, yeah, that's legit. <laughs> Okay, eighty six hundred for this thing has two hundred thousand miles. One thing I've noticed about E thirty IXs is that it's like a floor. They like still bring money regardless of how many miles, regardless of how much rust. There's always someone who at least needs a parts car, <laughs> and they're like, "Hey, the the differential's working, and you know the, the wheels are yeah. on there, which it's got the parts. Let's just take it." These are so cool. I, seems pretty do decent. they make an, a twenty five IX wagon? That would be yes, like but the only ultimate. only in overseas. Yeah, obviously, mm -hmm. all the wagons are overseas. But yeah, yes, yeah. they did make an IX wagon, but here it was just the sedan and the coupe. And I actually prefer the sedan. This is a coupe. E30, but red was the color. E thirty wagon is such a phenomenal. E thirty wagon car. is so cool. All the E thirties. Oh, I love yeah. the E thirty so much. I know it's overrated, and everybody will blah blah blah. I think the thirty is so much fun to drive. Every time I'm in one, I'm like, why do I have all these supercars? <laughs> I can so just get light. an E yeah. thirty and just um, have Tony Caroga from uh, Car and Driver has like a mint mint uh white on white 325 is convertible oh yeah with like you know thirty thousand miles on it or something that's just the most incredible thing i i love it so much it drives great yeah um, um the, but i would take this my wife would love this car oh yeah she'd be all over this thing is she like an my, e i might buy thing? her an e30 one day i met matt's wife like six months ago it was amazing i've never you know you hear about matt's wife and then one day you meet she her. Make, she likes. Uh, she knows. She likes boxy cars. She likes very square. That is um, the E30. Cars. Isn't she driving a Mach E? Yeah. It's like the. Well, yeah. I mean, she. We we have a tow, but she has a Delica and she has a Nissan Pow, and those are those are boxy. You should get a, uh, what of that new Hyundai Santa Fe. You seen how boxy that is? It is real. That is that is boxy. Yeah, we we may replace it with something boxy. She likes the Rivian S. Yeah. So we'll we'll see Everybody now that they have the cheaper the one. S. That's the, you know, what? The, everybody likes the Rivian S. That's the dream car. It's the best at everything. It's perfect. It, 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 is, it is. But ex, but it was too much. So now they have the two motor one that's only 600 horsepower. I saw that. The, By the way, the did you notice? I got an email from Rivian the other day. Did you notice R1T? They said you can get it in six weeks. One to six weeks, they said, if you order right oh, now. Oh, really? It's like, hmm, oh, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. That's good to know. We're selling Glad them. the orders orders are drying up. I guess. They're starting to get relatively affordable. Ironically, the next car is an R1S, oh, yeah, so. which I swear we would oh, stop really? at this car. But the next car is an R1S, and it's at seventy eight five. We've started to sell them around eighty, which you could. And the R1Ts okay. are even cheaper. Like you can start to see these becoming more reasonable price. We've sold R1Ts in the sixties, so like boom, it's happening. Wow, really? Yeah. Oh, Johnny, uh, I'm in a group text with some automotive journalists and, and Johnny Lieberman, who owns an R1T, seems to believe his car is worth a hundred grand right now, which I disagree with. <laughs> no, and in fact, that yellow, the, the only R1T we no-sailed in the last like two years was a yellow Was one. the yellow. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've no-sailed a couple, but a yellow one got like way, and we priced it about like a normal one because we figured, you know, it's a small market, but they'll, they'll come. Like the one who wants it will be there. It didn't happen. <laughs> It oh, did no. not go well. I'm trying to find it. But what it are your thoughts on yellow on the four GTs? Because it's the second rarest color, but nobody really wants it because it's yellow. Oh, is that right? I didn't know that. On the on the four GTs like yours, I yeah, didn't know that. it's the second rarest behind Quicksilver, but it doesn't command the premium that Quicksilver does because people just don't like it. You know it, what? Really. I I just saw a color chart for that car the other day. I was astonished. My blue is really rare. It must be the third rarest. My midnight is it? blue. Yeah, but. Red is incredibly common. Gray is incredibly common. You know what also is incredibly common? Heritage. There's like 900 oh, heritage yeah, there's cars. A lot of heritage. <laughs> like, wait yeah. a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Why do those bring so much money? Damn it. Um, yeah, the two rarest are Quicksilver and uh, and the yellow. And the and I think uh, Quicksilver is my favorite. And I could have bought one for very reasonable money and passed on it. And I was an idiot. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, that was my but, still my finest my finest purchase, my finest decision. Uh, what a great car! Have I you driven it. it much recently? I drive it almost every single day. It's dirty right now, forty one thousand miles. It, it's my beater exotic. You know how it is. What a great car! <laughs> that's, such, that's just the that's the best. That's one of the best cars ever made by anybody at any price. I ever. totally agree, yeah. and and I still think they're undervalued, but they did make a lot of them, and a lot of them were preserved with plastic. My mm-hmm. e e four fifty station wagon, my actual daily driver, is the only car in my fleet I consider more reliable than that. Ford GT. I, every time I start that Ford GT, it starts. Every time I take it somewhere it goes, it never scrapes on anything. I can put stuff in it. The dog rides in it. Now I fit inside it. It's amazing. Now that said, parts availability is becoming more of a concern with it Ford is, GTs. It is. Ford is not supporting that car. It's too bad. Yeah. What? Why? That's uh, stupid. It happens. You know how it is. They don't, they don't, they don't have um, like a... They, they, they still support it more than the current one, though. That's the current uh, one. They're already they're having the, a lot of problems. Newer one. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. still... Okay, yeah, Matt, no, we've no, had good. you for over an hour. I appreciate you. I love you dearly. Thank you for well, coming. thank you. I, I love you too, Doug. There are apparently chats, which I haven't been able Oh, here they are. There's apparently chats. Someone said yellow GT is hot. So, you know, that person disagrees with you. But it, to me, it looks a little like a bumblebee. That's fine. But, um, uh, yeah, I didn't, and for the record, I didn't say I don't like it. I just mean the va- the market isn't isn't as hot yeah. for it uh, because it, people in general are not uh, stoked about yellow yeah. GTs. But um, I would drive one. Thank you for coming with us. We appreciate it. Yeah, this is good. I was telling Thad for for a long time that you guys should be doing this, and I'm glad you are. This is and a now good we show. are, and Here we get we this. Are. We get this 325iX still going. We're killing it. Cars and bids, ladies and gentlemen, with Matt Farah. <laughs> and I'm sending uh, I'm sending two cars to you guys. I told you I'm sending you a pair of Mini Coopers. One of uh, one of my clients unfortunately passed away, and we've got uh, a mint. Uh, Mini Cooper, John Cooper works. Uh, Coop, the backwards baseball oh, the backwards app. Yep. Yeah, of course. With, uh, totally stock with a stick. It's blue. We're going to send that one to you. And then we've got a Mini Cooper Coop S, black, black, also with a stick, also stock and mint. And we're going to let them fly on cars and bids, no reserve, in a couple Boom. of weeks. If you're looking for a Mini Cooper Coop, which actually is a surprisingly fun car to drive, it was the most fun. Of yeah, all there the are, they're cool. Then there yeah. you go. There you are. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming, Matt. Thanks, boys. Thanks, Matt. It's we'll great to we'll talk see to you. you soon. All right. See you guys soon. Have Bye-bye. a good rest of your day. Bye, <laughs> audience. Bye, audience. <laughs> Whoa, it's us and then us. I bet. Look at look. If you look closely, it's us and then us and then us.